Hello, everybody. Welcome to What the Flick, Mad Men, Gina, Alonzo, and Ben. Huh? Look at you. About that. <laughs> Episode 10, A Tale of Two Cities. Uh, the two cities were New York and Los Angeles. So I, got <laughs> I got that. So, uh, Alonzo, what the hell was it? What was the deal? Uh, gosh, you, you know, I think the, the 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 line that sort of sums up this episode is where the guy from Avon says, "I don't know whether to be groovy or nostalgic." Oh, right. I right, think right. it's a lot of people who are being torn in two directions, specifically about their their personal beliefs and their professional uh, duties. Whether it's you know Ginsburg, uh, uh, you know. Calling very much, fascist. very much siding with the protesters at the Democratic Convention, but at the same time, as Harry Hamlin points out, happily cashing checks from Dow Chemical um, to uh, to Joan, you know, trying to sort of step up her non-silent partnership, uh, but at the same time, you know, having to do so against the current. Uh, I think a lot, you know, to Don, literally being two people uh, or watching himself drowning in a pool. Uh, you know, I think there's, there's the, the duality theme is, is, is enhanced in this episode. At the end, with Pete completely, oh. like in a moment of oh. transformation, mm. screaming, things aren't the same as they used to be. <laughs> uh, then deciding, walking into the writer's room, essentially, and, and yeah. deciding, all right, I'll try, like, maybe I should try it this way. We yeah. have never seen Pete, Cam Pete Campbell say fuck it like we did in the last five seconds of that show. <laughs> <laughs> and, and as we go, it's becoming so much more stylized every episode. It's like, it's becoming kind of Twin Peaksy. Yeah. Am I wrong? Well, Am I wrong? Well, in, two, in what way? I mean, exactly? Well, first of all, when we have, you know, Dawn, you know. Well, first of all, you need to know what Twin Peaksy era, like the first. Thirteen oh, episodes. I'm not, yeah. or, 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 I'm not. I'm not that well versed. Maybe I should have picked something else. But you know, like it, everything's becoming. You know, all these drug episodes and seeing things through these really skewed visions and these these weird things. Yeah. That's not very Mad Men. I mean, it's it's definitely taking a turn that way. I don't know. I mean, you know, we had Roger Serling's acid trip episode. I mean, I think this has yeah. sort of been an ongoing consciousness, if you will, of the show where, you know, between, get, I, I'm sure somewhere there's a website where someone's logging like Don Draper drunk and Don Draper high, you know, because it seems to be happening with well, we some did, regular. Uh, Gina's right. I mean, this is now two episodes where sort of drug tripping was a big Major part. Major theme. Now, that said, it's it's 1968. <laughs> right, right. I mean, that's, uh, I guess that's what was going on. Uh, I thought the Democratic Convention stuff was, was really excellent because it can, you really learn a tremendous amount about each character mm. based on how they react to it. Absolutely. And whether they give a shit about it. Sure. But some people are like, whatever, this is not part of, not part. I mean, Harry Hamlin's defense of it, in a sense, was very noble. Like, there was actually nothing wrong with it. Uh, he and Ginsburg, I think, in that argument, they're both right, they're both interestingly right. enough. Right. And, and what, what's, what's cool about the show is that it, it sort of, nobody comes out of this clean. You know, the, 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 the lefties are all still part of the advertising world, for God's sake, which is the kind There's of thing they would, they would profess yeah. to be against. And then you've got the conservatives, like the guys at Carnation, who also seem creepy and very short-sighted and in it for their own right. agenda. So so nobody, nobody political kind of walks away clean, uh, at least in this episode. I love the carnation scene. I love yeah. that because that guy, and just, I mean, a, a sign of a great show, again, is that how you, how effectively you create awkwardness. Mm. And they created it two such <laughs> credible awkward moments. First there, when the guy says, he yells at his, he creates a first awkward moment yelling at his partner yeah. saying, Hey, this is a business meeting. We're not here to talk about politics. And then he takes talks it, about politics. and then he talks about it, <laughs> but he slams the table and then, they're all like, yeah. oh, totally, yeah. And then, uh, and, and it, 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 that was seen to me nicely juxtaposed with, uh, with Joni at trying to get the Avon breakfast. account and mm -hmm. she's at that breakfast with Peggy and you see Roger save that meeting yeah. and you see the value of the accounts guy and Roger pulling that all back in where the guy's like, Tell us what you got. You know, <laughs> you're here with this great line about, I'm sorry your last girlfriend hurt you. We're, oh, here, we're, oh, we're, oh. we're here now. Oh, wasn't that yeah. fantastic? Oh my God, that was so, so good. So, but Roger's a genius yeah. at that. And then Joni tries to freeze his feet out. And then she tries to do it. And 10 seconds into right. it, she's like, Peggy? Peggy? And for phony hippies, though, I also love uh, 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 the, the short guy. Um, oh, Dan, Danny. Danny. Paul Danny. Simon. Yes, Daniel. exactly. Yeah. Right. Who, who's, you know, who, who, who on the one hand is being all you know headband and right. dashiki and peace sign, yeah. but he's dropping names of studio yeah. execs around town. Right. Yeah. Lotus. <laughs> oh. yeah. 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 He replaced Jack Warren. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I think you're so right about Joan at the breakfast. I mean, but that's the problem. Like, 
Joan has put up with so much shit. She swallows all this stuff. They're constantly making, you know, bashes at her about how she became a partner. And she's put up with so much for so long. She finally tried to do something for herself. And even Peggy was like, keep me out of this. Like, well, this is your fuck well, that's up. That's a great, one of the things I love about it is that you're rooting for her. I don't care that she froze Pete out. I don't know either. I don't know, nobody it. civil would care that she froze Pete yeah. out but she doesn't have the experience yeah. to do it yet, yeah. so it didn't work. And then there's that nice girl power as they fight and they're yeah. at each other, and then, but in the end, Peggy's like, all right, I'm gonna. Well, yeah. Yeah, their relationship that, has yeah. been really interesting. You better hope he calls. Better, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. On the one hand, you would think, you know, like it was two women in this industry, in this era, they would, they would be on each other's side, but they've actually been, I think, more combative yeah. with each other than supportive of each other. But every so often, they kind of remember, oh, we're sort of, we need to be on the same team here because no one else has our back. Yeah, you but know? I think, like, I think in both their situations, how they got to where they've gotten to has been very isolating. Mm. And so I don't think they they really look at each other as sisters. I think they're like, I've had to fight and work and do crazy shit for everything I have. So you're kind of on your own because I'm not giving this up. Uh, having d Doing this conversation as we do on, on Monday's after Game of Thrones and after this incredibly d duplicitous Game of Thrones episode, like I now sort of, I don't know how to view Ted because, you know, when he says to Pete, hey, Pete, you know, a co a company business is your business, yeah. or words to that effect, and, you know, we're all on the same team here, and he's telling Harry Hamlin, stop alienating these people, yeah. uh, and takes his volunteers to take the name. Like, are we supposed to think, oh, what evil move does Ted have in store, <laughs> where he comes back and gives a slips fucking Joni's neck, you know? <laughs> By the way, I love she, that you call her Joni. Yeah. Chachi. So cute. Well, that's, and, and, and that brings me to, I had the same exact question about Bob, Bob Benson. Benson. Yeah, well, this, we learned, a li we got a little more. Who the fuck is Bob Benson? Well, you know, it, uh, it, there's been a lot of very interesting internet chatter over the last oh, week I about bet. Bob Benson, about is he the guy plummeting during the credits? Is he, is he Don Draper's, you know, mirror image? Is yeah, he, is, is he a time traveling Bobby Draper? I mean, like, <laughs> Right. There's a well, lot some of people theory, said, is, he, is he Don Draper's son? Uh, you know, he certainly seems to be on a Don trajectory in terms of, you'll remember that Don got into this business by sucking up to yeah, Roger, Roger. And, and Bob is certainly doing that same kind of yeah. smooth glad handing and listening to the self-help record yeah. this week oh, seems so like great. the kind of thing that Don yeah. would have done on the way up. So, yeah. But yeah. You, you pointed this out too, is that is, that is is, is it set to be, as, the, as we move in season seven, the three episodes left this year, as we move into season seven, is it set up for, in the touchy-feely 70s, Don already showing signs of being ill-equipped yeah. to right. deal in his world. He looks exactly the same. He's not progressing really at all. Uh, is, this, is, is, is this Bob time Benson's time? Does Bob Benson sort of succeed Don as Don? Yeah. Is Don it, 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 completely marginalized by Bob Benson or people like Bob Benson? Was it, was it this episode or another where Harry Hamlin looked at Bob and was like, what are you doing here? Get out of here! Why yeah. are you always on this floor? Why are you always on this floor? But then Harry Hamlin showing a little humanity, too, like because in, rather than where someone could have screamed at Bob Benson for blowing Manischewitz, Manischewitz right. he was like, no, he did what he could. He stepped up. He yeah. stepped up for me. I, you did not. And fine. Roger also with that nice reaction on Manischewitz. Well, it was coming, yeah. coming for years. Who gives a shit? <laughs> right. I do want to go back to Joan Bunch for a second. Because yeah. <laughs> for Joan for a second, what's interesting about her landing the Avon account is that she's having this lunch with this guy or dinner or whatever and thinks it's a date and then realizes that it isn't a date. And the fact that here's a guy who doesn't want to fuck her. Yeah, yeah right. Is now somebody that she can do business with, you yeah, know? Yeah, and yeah. It's, She's it's, thrilled. Yeah, it's sort of the antithesis of how she got her partnership in the first place. Absolutely. It's like a rare moment of a girl. She's thrilled that yeah. he's not interested. Yeah. Exactly, yeah, yeah. Right. like there's yeah. somewhere else that this conversation can go, namely business. Well, and I think for Joan, the only thing better than the idea of someone taking care of her is her getting the opportunity to take, take care, care of herself. Yeah, sure, so yeah. she was pretty excited about that. Interesting. Um, can we talk about the eighth nipple? <laughs> There's a nipple for you. Yeah, yes. <laughs> call it something else. But the the hookah. Can yeah, we yes. please talk about that? So they, they were doing what hashish? Yeah. yeah. And, and, and what is that? It's 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 it, an opiate. It's like it comes from the poppy plant. <laughs> um, so is it more uh, in the cocaine family or more in the weed I mean, the family? Heroin, more the weed opium family. family. More in the weed family. Yeah, I, like it. I like it that the crew back there. <laughs> Silent. 
throughout the first nine installments <laughs> of, of, of Mad 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 Weed. Weed! Weed, yeah. Bob. Thank That's you. It, yeah. Yeah. It'll, get, it'll, it'll get you high. And, and, and obviously has hallucinogenic yeah. uh, qualities, at which, you know, for, for again, we get a whole thing with, with Don. I love the idea that his fantasy is of a... Uh, a, a pregnant Megan who doesn't want to be an actress anymore. Yeah, that's you know, true. I, it's very, Talk about I, not I, evolving. I, I love yeah. that he says, I hate actresses at the beginning. It was like, wow, that was not a joke. Yeah. <laughs> Is there, does, does anyone watching think that these sort of now two straight episodes of post-Sylvia of nice yeah. Don, Megan interactions, and clearly he's not that interested in, in look, I mean, he's Don Draper and he got taken to a Hollywood party, yeah. so yeah, he, and he got high. Yeah, he was going to sleep with somebody, yeah. but he really wasn't looking for that, he wasn't no. particularly, but does anyone think for half a second that there's a, like, oh look, Don and Megan are gonna be happy no. together. Yeah, no, no. no. it's not it, Was it Chris good. Rock who said a, a man is only as faithful as his options, and Don has plenty of options, and I think it'll <laughs> always make him Don. Yeah, you know, totally. This is who he is. But even, but even when he thinks this is what he wants, it can't possibly, and it can't yeah. be Megan. Yeah. The, the other interesting thing about the, the, the Don, Don and substance abuse, uh, there's that line early on where they talk about, uh, where he's on the plane with Roger, and Roger talks about that hick voice you put on when yeah. you're a few drinks in. Oh, it's right. like, ah, right. Dick Whitman comes out, Yo, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Right, 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 right. And interestingly, at the end of the episode, Don is totally fine with getting Draper out of the name of the agency. And Why so is that? I oh, that's, think that's because because yeah. well, we've talked earlier in the season about the possibility of him abandoning Don Draper the way he abandoned Dick Whitman, and so it clearly I think I think erasing himself from the letterhead is is sort of maybe the first step in erasing himself entirely. Which is fascinating, but on the other hand, I can't see him fighting for something like that because I think it's, it would make him look weak. It would be sniveling, like if Pete Campbell's like, well, no, my name should be on there. Like I feel like Don wouldn't. He would pick his battles, like, and that would yeah, be one of them. It was an I agree. It was a, first, they're both totally interesting points. A, a willingness of Don to have his name erased yeah. is telling. We can't ignore that, and I didn't even think about that. But, um, but, but to your point, he does say to Ted, "Are you okay with this?" Like, yeah. like if. If it affects you too, right? Yeah. And also, but like, like, right? I'm not going to fight. But if you're okay to it, then yeah. me fighting for it, it would just then I'll it would look, be so then I'll look to, dick move for right? Me. That's a yeah. dick move for me. So yeah. if you're not fighting it, now I can't yeah, fight exactly. it. Although he does generally not seem to care because Pete is like, "Do you know what this means?" And Don's like, eh. 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 Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> "You want one?" Yeah. It's almost 10:30. He wants a scotch. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, Harry oh. Crane's West Coast outfits. Mm. He looks like, is, doesn't he look like Paul Lind? <laughs> <laughs> he has the long flowing ascot wow. and the whole vibe. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> you went to sailing this weekend. Roger looked dressed to sail at, yeah. at, at, at any point <laughs> during that jaunty, episode. Double breasted yeah. ascot. Was, I mean, he he couldn't, jaunty. You're he couldn't have right. looked more inappropriately dressed and then he got punched in the dick by a oh, five foot three guy. Fantastic. <laughs> yeah. But the line leading up to the dick punch was also great. Yeah. yeah that was good. Uh, and Lotus loved it all. Yeah. Lo uh, oh, Lotus. <laughs> oh, I hope Lotus comes back. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I don't think we're going to see Lotus again. Oh, uh, Lotus. So uh, yeah, so I mean, again, it seemed like a lot of the things that were were just sort of set up. Like this was yeah. not a this was not a not this, an action pack. This was not a. They didn't want to rival Game of Thrones. They, they wanted to stay away from well, Game of Thrones. Well, I think what's interesting though also is that you know. The, the way this show uses then current events as a backdrop for it, it's kind of interesting when, I mean, now we think about the 68 Democratic Convention and the riots, and there's a real sort of turning point in history. And for the for folks who were there when it was actually happening, it was just a thing happening on TV, and you watched it and you were upset by it or you weren't, and then you went to work. Right, right. You know, you, 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 you carried with on you, with yeah. your life. You, know? you carried on, but you see that how dramatic that must have been for people who don't see riots in Turkey uh, every right. day, who don't, sure. and, and all of a sudden here on television was uh, American policemen, and we'd seen it throughout the 60s to some extent, but, you, but those were black kids, yeah. and it was very easy, I suspect, for white Americans to be horrified at that, but also to think, well, you know, yeah. um, or just to it, differentiate themselves. It's yeah. it, it was expected. Right. But here, this was not, and you saw, I thought, really good reactions both from Joni uh, and from and from Megan, Megan, who were sort of, and Don, I think, also and deliberately, it seemed to me, deciding that it was nothing. Like that was his role yeah. to decide that it was uh, that it was nothing. But I, I th clearly, I think, a different, a very telling, different time. And then uh, for for what that kind of video meant, because we yeah. just ha and you heard the announcer say that on TV we we didn't have the capacity to show it live. But here it is, it's like unedited, they let it go. That was unique. It's interesting that, you know, and it's funny you talk about Don sort of deliberately stepping back from it. 
you know, we, we've talked about Don becoming less relevant as the 60s proceed. It's interesting that at the beginning of the show and, and the previously on Mad Men, he's looking at the, the Hawaii ad right, yes, from the totally. beginning of the season, the one that, that everybody but him pegged as a suicide, you know, thing. Right. Walking into and the it doesn't come up in the episode right. at all. So they, they included well, that exa- as something we needed to know we, without directly that touching to me, it. Vanishing, that relates to you with the willingness to take Draper out of the name. Um, they, they had briefly there as the, as, the, as the speaking at the Democratic convention, talking about the rules that would come into place in the 1972 convention, which changed politics in America, which all of a sudden really essentially put voting and much more, a much more direct process of electing the people who each party sends uh, to be nominated. Uh, we got a little glimpse of that again as the sort of significantly changing times. The idea, like 68 was the last time you could make any argument for uh, for back room, you know what we talk about every convention, but it can't happen. Room. There's no smoke-filled room right. where you're picking the nominee, and that went away in '72, right. and the stage was shut for it in '68 because of those protests uh, and and more sort of direct accountability and direct access of delegates to to vote. Well, yeah, and and to sort of speak a little bit more to that, and what you said about the backdrop of you know this time period, and it really does show everybody's true colors. I mean, remember how upset we were, you know, when, when it was between Pete Campbell and Harry talking about the assassination of Martin Luther King? I mean, we wouldn't have really understood that level of Harry and Pete had that not been the backdrop. And so every time one of these big things happens, when like when you said Don will be like, eh, eh right. what are you going to do? Uh, and everyone else is so upset. It, it, it shows so character. much yeah. about their character. You're talking about Harry reminds me, though, that Joan, like in, that, in the Harry-Joan Fight, which, oh, I th- yeah. I, which I think is a no contest, who's the dick, who's the not, right. you know, uh, despite Harry's frustration. But one of the reasons why Harry, of course, never gets to be partners because he has no idea how to treat asshole. people and talk yeah. to people. He doesn't get that part of, yeah. of, of being an executive. But, he, um, uh, but Joan still, like, despite what Harry did, from a business point of view, Joan, like, to the selling Harry to the Avon guy. Right. Like Joan, yes, Joan, yes. No, Joan has no bitterness there whatsoever. Absolutely. She's, yeah, which speaks highly of. Uh, well, and because at, at the end of the day, it's still you know what's good. What's good for the group is going to be good for Joan. So right. she's smarter than that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, good stuff. Three episodes left. Ah. Um, <laughs> and then, uh, and that, I don't even know what that's going to lead to. On uh, I guess Breaking Bad at some point. Oh. Uh, oh. August fifth, I think, isn't that premiere? Yeah. So then this will end at the end of June, and then that'll be that. Oh, and then we get our security blankies all the way through. We don't have to wait for anything. And then Walking Dead will be Halloween, and then everybody's happy. <laughs> Thanks, everybody.